Let's make a cast right there, folks. I see a bed. I see several beds. And I believe they're bluegill beds. There he is. I knew there was some bluegill right there. I see their beds. The water's real dark. This is a big son of a gun right here. Golly. I don't know if I'm going to get him or not. Wow. That is a huge, huge bluegill. That is a gem dandy. Now, folks, that's a bluegill. That is a huge bluegill. The reason why it's dark, well, this water has a tannic color to it. Uh, real dark color, so these fish are going to be beautiful. Coming out of here, let's let him, let's let him go. There he goes. Okay, I can see him right there. He is dark. This water is real dark and tannic, and I caught him right there. I don't know if we're going to be able to see these beds or not. I doubt it. But if y'all can see, there's a lot of activity out in front of us. These are bed and bluegill. Now, they could be some shellcracker in here, too. I don't know. This is nothing more than just a pond. Is all it is. It's a big pond. But I don't know anything about it. But I'm going to show you what I'm using. And what had happened... Well, I'll tell you what happened. I seen this pond, and I thought, well, why not try to catch a few fish out of it? I've done very few pond videos. In fact, most of mine are on big water. This is where I cut my teeth. Little bitty ponds like this. And this one has got some big bluegill. Didn't know it. But what I'm using right here is a little Nico bait. It's called uh, Nico Stonefly, 0.7 inches long. And I have it rigged up on a tiny, tiny little jig head. That jig head has got a size 10 hook in it. And it's, uh, I don't know how heavy the jig head is. It's very light. Two pound test high vis line. Little bitty float and a wimpy rod. Wimpy ain't the word for it. It's a little sow belly ultralight rod. Six and a half foot long. One thousand size Daiwa. And that's all we're doing. I'm going to tell you there's fish all over this right here. And I believe I'm fishing a little bit too deep. That's about 14 inches deep. And I don't think I need to be fishing but about Mm. Let's try that. About 11 inches deep. Now this little stone fly is 0 .07, so that's less than an inch long. That is a tiny, tiny bait. Tiny folks, perfect for bluegill and shell cracker. And they could exist. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. I know I just got to buy it that quick. Did y'all see that? Boy, boy, boy. That was a quick bite. Let's see what it is. It looks like just a, a, a big bluegill. Big spawning bluegill. These fish is on bed. Heavy. Look at that. That is huge. Huge, and it is full of them. I don't think anybody's messed up, messed in, fished here. <laughs> Little tiny hook, quit, quit. Look at there, what a fish! I want y'all to look. Uh, I'm wanting to release him. Let's release him over here. Maybe he'll lose his bearings because I don't want him to go right back on that bed. Okay, let's pitch him right there. This is kind of a swampy pond. But I don't want him to... Maybe he'll want, he won't go back on this bed over here. There's another one. Big 
Golly, bum, these are mules. Mules I'm talking about. I can't even move this fish. I'm wanting to move him out of that bed, but I don't want to pop my little line either. That's how big these fish are. Golly. Boy, 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 if they are some shell cracker in here, I'll hunt them. If there's some shell cracker, oh, stop it. If there's some in here, they're going to be giants. All right, let's let him go right there. Wow. This is a lot of fun. Before we catch any more, folks, let's talk about bluegill and shellcracker or any panfish when they're on bed. These fish are definitely not hitting this bait because they're hungry. They're not. They're hitting this bait because of a protective instinct they have. They're wanting to bed, to carry on their own kind. And they're aggravated, they're, 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 they're hot tempered right now because they're being bothered by a lot of all different fish. Little bass, uh, little catfish if they exist in this pond. Their own kind little bluegill and little shellcracker. They're trying to eat their eggs. They're aggravated. Anything that hits in their bed, they're going to nip at it or try to eat it. So that's why it's important to fish with tiny baits like this if you want to catch a lot of them. When you're talking about artificials, of course, there's no doubt you can't beat a red worm, but I don't have any. But this is second best. As far as tackle, wimpy is the deal. Noodle whip quality, I'm talking about. Wimpy makes it a lot of fun. Light line, oh my goodness. You can't beat it, folks. It's second to none. I, will. I know what y'all are thinking. Let it go. I have. They're really getting real active right now. See, can y'all see them? There's all kinds of fish right there. All right, let's make a short cast. It that float probably it's gonna go down just, well, I thought it would. Let's make another cast over there. There he is. Yeah, it's a big one. These are some of the biggest bluegill I've, I mean, I hadn't caught any real big ones not like this in a long time. This fish is stretching my line. I'm talking about, and they fight, when they get this big, they fight much harder than a crappie. For their size, I don't know of a fish that, that fights like a big bluegill or shellcracker. And I believe this is just a big, big bluegill. Yeah, I mean a big one. Golly, I want y'all to look. Been a long time since I've caught them this big. That is huge. That little tiny hook, that's the deal. And that tough little mouth. You won't lose them. You won't lose them. There are minners everywhere right here. We're not going to be able to see them swim off. Not in this kind of... This is tannic water. The reason it's this color is all these trees around here. And there's no flow to this lake. And uh, the leaves deteriorate in the bottom on the bottom and causes it to be this color. It's actually clear. I believe we can catch one from right here. I just missed one. Oh, God. It's just full of them, folks. Let's try that again. There is no nothing special about this. They're just aggressive and they'll eat anything. A fly rod would be fun right here, too. 
man, I tied into another one that quick. My goodness. Catching them when they're on bed is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And these fish bad. The reason why they're so plentiful, look at this fish fighting, is because every full moon from spring, from when the water temperature gets around 62 degrees and on through summer, he come off. They bed. When we get down fishing, let's go over and get on that teeter tighter. What I'm doing is catching a couple, leaving them alone for about 15 minutes and then come back. That's what I'm doing because they get wise quick. Or these are, for some reason, I'm going to make a cast on out right there. Now, I'm not fishing deep. I started off fishing too deep, but I caught one right off the bat. This water is real shallow. It's probably a foot deep right there where my cork's at. Or less. But there's a lot of activity right there. Y'all see that? Let's go back over there again. I should get bit now. Come on. Right there. That cork should go down just like that. <laughs> Golly. Man, oh man. With this kind of tackle here, these fish feel like they're five to seven pounds a piece. And with this light, light, sewing thread I'm using well makes it even more fun a lot more fun I mean there's no doubt in my mind that these fish are strong enough to pop this line like nobody's business that's a mule that is a mule right there that might be the biggest one I've caught so far look at there that is simply a mule I can't even put my hand, that's as far as I am put my old big hand. Oh my goodness. But you talking about some good eating right there, folks. Going back. There he goes. Golly, that was the biggest one. A lot of times you can take a bait like that, like this, a little bait like this. Here's a perfect example. See, we can see these beds. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up. But you can take it and right in the center of the circle, just like that, let the bait just lay there. Okay. For a few seconds and then barely move it like that. A lot of times that's when it, you can trigger a bite just by doing that. When they're slow about biting or skittish a little bit, that will work oftentimes. And another thing, folks, the reason why I like these Nico baits, they're indestructible. There's no telling how many fish I could catch on that bait right there. And just like all baits that I fish with, I glue them. I glue them. And that they don't come out of position. The hook is always in the right position. They're, they're rigged straight. And you can catch fish on a Nico bait one after the next for as long as you want to. That's fishing. That's what I call trouble-free fishing. One of the worst things that you can do, a person can do, I think, is to fish, miss a fish, and what it does, it pulls the bait down. And you're having to readjust it. Make another cast. 15, 20 seconds later, get another bite. Have to readjust it again. There's no sense of it. You're you're wasting a lot of precious time. You need to be catching them. Whoa. You need to be catching them. Now, that's just my opinion. Let's go down yonder and catch another. There's one. Golly. My, 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 my. If I hold, my, hold him out of that stuff, that was instant. Instant bite. I dropped it right on his head now. Quick, quick, quick. Don't break my line. Whew. 
This is fun. This brings me right back to some childhood memories, except for I used a cane pole, um, a gold Aberdeen eagle claw hook, and a red worm, and a quill. If y'all remember, um, porcupine quills, and a little bitty split shot, and that was your rig. If if this is a bluegill that I'm trying to catch right here, it's a big one. Let's see if we can get one under this tree, or close to that tree. They're always going to hang, hang out <clears throat> under trees, waiting for a bug or something to fall. That's a fact. Plus, there's a little bit of brush. Yeah, this is a good place to catch one right here. And that went something over there, too. But right here, we should catch one. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Oh, what we got? Big one. Now, this fish here is not on bed. This is just a... This is a big son of a gun. I just targeted an area that should have some regardless. This is a big one. My goodness. Wow, folks. Wow. My goodness. Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> Let's look at this one. I'm going to end it on this fish right here. But look at that tiny bait. That's a perfect presentation for what we're doing. This is a great old big one. That is a bull gill and a half. That fish is peeing. So that fish is on bed. Let's put him back under the tree. Big old gill. Wow. Let's put him back under there. Evidently, there's a, well, there's another big old one. <laughs> Golly. That makes me want to catch another one. Going back in there, there's probably a bed up under here, up under that limb right there then. But that was a big, look, there's some big ones in here, folks. Them are big. Well, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, that was a lot of fun. Mine. I didn't even get up this morning with intentions of going fishing. In fact, I've been working, remodeling Mama Sue a bathroom. And y'all know how bathrooms are. They're very aggravating. And I just couldn't stand it. And I thought, I seen this little pond. And I thought, well, I just want to try that. And uh, perfect little bait for it. Little Nico bait right there. It looks like it's been untouched. And uh, they're that tough, folks. I've never seen them kind of them. The last tech baits are going to be the thing of the future, in my opinion. Folks, I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments, everything y'all do for this channel. I know it seems like a repeat, 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 but that's the best way that I can say it, that I can put it into words. Y'all are well appreciated, I guarantee you. Hey, well, people out here, I know they are. The people are here, well, And remember, go fishing when you can, because it's good food.